All right. Well, hey, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for investing your time with us today on this uh, these really important topics. I'm pretty passionate about this and um, this topic around using Defender for Endpoint for unmanaged devices and device discovery, I'm really passionate about as well. So I'm Matt Sosman. I'm a senior security architect at Microsoft. I'm on the Global Partner Solutions team. And so I love what I do because I get to work with our partners and help them build a business on this technology and, and be able to help our joint customers be successful. And, and I think you'll see as I go through this, there's a lot of opportunity for you uh, from consulting and assessments all the way to even managed services. So as I go through this, kind of have an open mind a little bit and just think about some of the opportunity and then where you know, Richard and Paul and Tiffany and myself and others from the team can help you uh, be successful with it and, and rolled out for your clients. Uh, okay, so uh, actually a quick housekeeping item before I continue, um, you probably will get a copy of this deck. So I'm gonna provide a copy to the team and, and they can give you access because there's some really good slides in here. Uh, okay, so let's kick things off and let's talk a little bit about uh, unmanaged devices. And you know, when you when you think about an enterprise network, um, there's obviously risk to having unmanaged devices on that network. Uh, now, sure, I could have a personal iPad that I bring in from home that might be on the guest Wi-Fi network, which has zero trust controls, network segmentation, all those things to account for that. But what if I plug a non-managed computer or some kind of device on the actual enterprise network or even the supervisory network of my OT environment? That's a risk, that's a problem. And you know, when you think about that unmanaged device, well, what kind of vulnerabilities does it have? Can those vulnerabilities be exploited? Is there any kind of software running on that device that could um, you know, pose harm to that network? A lot of things start to come to mind there. And so Microsoft uh, did a study and, and there's a good blog uh, out there. And in fact, it's linked here in my speaker notes, the deck, where we you know, basically went out and discovered with our customers that users are 71% more likely to be infected on unmanaged device. Uh, and that's also because those unmanaged devices, they're not managed. So they're not receiving updates and patches. Uh, they're not getting security recommendations by Microsoft so that IT can go out and correctly configure those to reduce attack surface and lower risk. And so there's obviously some, some opportunity there. So I just want you to kind of think about that and to set the stage with unmanaged devices. It's important. Um, your customer, our customer, likely has unmanaged devices on their enterprise network, even on their supervisory OT network, and let's really hope not on their actual OT network, but the un unmanaged devices, they're out there. And so how do we discover them? And then how do we take action to remediate that? That's what this is about. Uh, if you take a step back and you look at the data breach reports out there over the last couple of years, um, unmanaged devices, whether it's a unmanaged Mac or Windows or iPad or Android or, or Android device on the network, those obviously have risk. But think about network devices. Think about a router or a switch that or a firewall that maybe hasn't been hasn't had its firmware updated or it's or you know Cisco IOS hasn't been updated in years. Obviously, there's vulnerabilities there that could be exploited. And in the news, we've seen that happen. And we've seen that open a customer or an organization up to attack. And in some cases, they even got attacked. And so we built this amazing capability into Defender for Endpoint to help us recognize those unmanaged devices, but also the network devices like the routers and switches here to be able to understand, is there any vulnerabilities there? And then how can we actually get those patched and get those remediated? Really the point here is giving you visibility. So you don't have any gaps in visibility. So while Paul and Richard uh, this morning here have been talking about OT and Defender for IoT for those OT environments. We're now talking about Defender for Endpoint, but we're going to talk a little bit more about the enterprise network, maybe even the supervisor network, and what kind of unmanaged devices or network devices might be on there that need your attention. So, you know, when we think about this capability, and we'll jump into the product here in a second, but again, we're talking about mobile devices, iOS, Android, the like. We're talking about workstations, Windows, Mac, um, even Windows Server. We're talking about servers and also network devices, firewalls, switches, routers, you know, that sort of thing. That's all in scope for this. And so what that means is being able to go out and discover those devices. I'll explain how here in a second, but we want to go out and discover all of those endpoints on the network, regardless of what it is. We want to surface that back in the Defender for Endpoint uh, management console under device inventory. And we want to show you that 
hey, you have got some unmanaged devices. <clears throat> or we've got some devices out there that maybe we don't quite know what they are, but you still need to know that they exist. So we want to be able to perform that discovery. Now, what's cool about this is Defender for Endpoint does this seamlessly. I'll explain how in just a second. From there, once we discover those devices, we want to empower you to go out and assess the security configuration of those devices. Assess them, see is there any vulnerabilities in the software, the firmware that's on those devices? Do we need to turn them from unmanaged into managed? If you're in a large enterprise environment, it's not uncommon for a power user or maybe somebody in IT to throw a device out there under their desk or something that is a web server or does some kind of a, a line of business function, but it's not managed. So obviously we want to be able to gain visibility to that and then be able to assess it and then ultimately be able to onboard it to Defender for Endpoint. And because we've already discussed, discovered it and assessed it, being able to onboard it is pretty seamless now that it's surfaced in the console. So that's the mission. That's what we're trying to do here. So how do we do that? Well, we start with going to the security.microsoft.com portal, Microsoft 365 Defender, and being able to access it from here. Now, I can see immediately on the dashboard that I've got discovered devices uh, out there that Defender for Endpoint has seen, but also I could see that there's some devices out there that we can onboard as well. So immediately there's cards surfaced here in Microsoft 365 Defender. But when we start to drill into Defender for Endpoint and we click on the device inventory uh, section on the left side, we see a complete inventory of all of our devices. Now, when I click on my filter, on the right side here, I can filter by onboarding status. And so it might be kind of hard to see here in the slide, but I can say, hey, show me all the devices that have been onboarded to Defender for Endpoint, servers, workstations, mobile devices. Remember, Defender for Endpoint supports a myriad of operating systems, Android, iOS, iPad OS, Windows Server 2008, all the way to 2019, Linux, and uh, obviously Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 7, and Windows 8.1. So we got you covered. So from those onboarded devices, I could see that, but what we wanna do here is check the boxes for can be onboarded, unsupported, and insufficient info. And I'll explain the difference here in a second, but when we do that, that allows us to see the devices that it discovered. Now, I can also click on the network devices tab at the top, and that will show me network devices that it discovered as well. We'll come back to that here in a second. Um, but here's a, an example of what that would look like. So for network devices that we went out and, and found in the network, Again, switches, firewalls, routers, and I'll explain how we do this, but um, this is a good example of what that looks like. Now, there's a caveat here. Um, we're not gonna discover unmanaged network devices. So this is actually using SNMP in an authenticated fashion to go out and discover those network devices. Again, I'll come back to that and I'll explain how that works here in a few minutes. Um, now, what's interesting about this, for those devices that we discover, we can go out and based on the network traffic that's coming from those devices, how many times can I say devices? We will notice what software might be running on those devices. And then from there, we will give you a listing of the software. So in this case, this, this is network devices, and we can see that, okay, Cat OS and XOS and iOS for some Cisco devices are being ran in the network. And here we can see 566 of those uh, devices have that OS. So that can be important, right, for many different reasons. But I, I, this allows me to get a software inventory of what's out there. Now, again, this is important, though, because it's inside Defender for Endpoint. So in the same screen, I can set my filter and say, show me all the Mac OS devices. Show me all the Windows 10 devices. Show me all the, the Ubuntu uh, or name the Linux distribution device. So it allows me to pivot. I don't have to go out to a third-party tool. It's all contained right within Defender for Endpoint. Now, this can also give me recommendations. So as you know, at Defender for Endpoint, we've got a capability called Threat and Vulnerability Management, TVM. So on the left side, when I click on Vulnerability Management, I can click on Recommendations. And based on what it discovers, whether the device is managed or unmanaged, onboarded or not onboarded, it will give you recommendations on how to better secure that device, better reduce attack surface, reduce risk, and increase posture. So in this example, we discovered those network devices running Cisco iOS, and the recommendations are, well, hey, we think it's running a older version of, of iOS, go out there and update it. And in fact, what's interesting here, when I click on that, you'll see this fly out here on the right side, I can actually go look up the CVEs associated with that version of iOS. 
So this gives me a really informed way of not only doing the discovery, doing the assessment, but also understanding, okay, why would I want to update to that latest version? What are the CVEs that are affecting this, right? The vulnerabilities. Um, and then I can go out and see what devices in the network have that version versus devices that maybe don't. So just the, the intelligence I can gather here is, is huge. Now, uh, let's pivot. Get away from network devices for a second. Let's talk about mobile devices it discovers, MacBooks, Windows devices it discovers on the network that are not onboarded to Defender for Endpoint. What's well, going to give you a recommendation? It's going to say, hey, we recommend you onboard this, in addition to other things. And I'll come back to that here in a second. When we give the recommendation, this makes it super easy to then click on remediation options. And as you know, with Defender for Endpoint, it's directly integrated with Intune, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, and it will help you automatically onboard those devices. And so immediately I can, I can go through, create a security task in Defender for Endpoint, which then flows into Microsoft Endpoint Manager to then be able to get those devices onboarded. And now the Intune admin can go out and, and, and get that taken care of. We'll save that topic for another day because that's a little bit of a, of a different conversation. Um, but there is a process you can follow here that's relatively easy to get those discovered devices onboarded to Defender for Endpoint. Okay, I know what you're wondering. Matt, cool, how does it work? Let me, let me explain. So there's, there's two different modes here called basic and standard. That's to go out and discover non-managed devices, unmanaged devices. So we're going to talk about that first. The other method is using network devices and SNMP. I'll talk about that last. So for this, what's interesting is any device that's onboarded to Defender for Endpoint, any Windows 10 device, I should say, can go out and perform this discovery. So you're not deploying an agent. Right. As you know, Defender for Endpoint is built into Windows 10. It's already configured to do this out of the box. Now I could scope it. I could tell it, hey, use these Windows 10 devices to do, do device discovery and not these. Do it on this network, and not that network. There's lots of configuration here. And if we have time, I'll, I'll go through a little bit of that with you. Um, but there's no network configuration. I don't have to go open firewall ports. I don't have to do any special routing or switching. Um, there's really nothing else I have to do other than just make sure the feature is enabled in Defender for Endpoint. That's huge. Um, the second part of this is I can do targeted discovery. And so I can leverage that Windows 10 device that's onboarded to Defender for Endpoint, and I could scope it and tell it, okay, go out and only discover uh, devices on these subnets that I specify. Only discover devices that meet this criteria. Uh, maybe exclude these other devices. If you have a honeypot that's out there, or you know, other type of devices related to security, you may not want to do a discovery on those, so you could exclude those. So there's controls there. Uh, so you could do what, what I call a targeted assessment. Now, think about this with me though for a second. Uh, all of your Microsoft partners, your consultants, your architects, engineers, you work for you know, a Microsoft partner that's a consulting agency or managed serv service provider. What is the opportunity for you to go out and do this with a customer? Uh, well, as you know, there's a trial of Defender for Endpoint could onboard a few Windows 10 devices in the environment and use that trial license and then perform some kind of an assessment where you discover all these devices. And then imagine that, come back with those findings of what you discovered on the network for that customer with a bunch of recommendations. There's your roadmap, there's your project you can propose. Huge opportunity there, right? So that's how we go out and, and actually do the discovery. Now, let me talk about some of the different discovery methods. I mentioned there's basic and standard. Here's where it gets interesting. Basic is where we leverage that Windows 10 device and it acts as a passive sensor. Think of it like sonar on a submarine, right? You got passive and active sonar. Passive sonar is out there listening. It's listening to whales and dolphin, dolphins and all the sounds in the ocean, right? Active sonar sends a ping. It sends out a signal and it waits for that signal to bounce off an object in return. We're doing passive. We're listening to traffic on the network. And there's a process on that Windows 10 device that's been onboarded to Defender for Endpoint. There's a process that gets enabled called senseNDR.exe. SenseNDR.exe is actually performing that, that network listening. It's listening for broadcast traffic. It's listening for some other ports and traffic on those ports. It's like DHCP. It's looking at you know port 22 for SSH and that kind of thing. Um, and then it's analyzing that and it's sending its findings back to the cloud service, back to Defender for Endpoint. We'll come back to that here in a second. 
Now we're using a built-in traffic uh, capture tool called PKT Mon. Um, and in fact, this is all ran via PowerShell. If you go out and look at the actual technical documentation on docs.microsoft.com, we will tell you the path of where that PowerShell script is found. And you can actually open up the PowerShell script and see exactly what it's doing. In fact, I encourage you to go look at it. Lots to be learned there. Now, what's interesting, and I know you've been wondering about this, but Matt, what if I have somebody that's at home or at a coffee shop or at a hotel? I probably don't want to discover devices on that network, right? Yeah, you don't. I, I agree with you. So the system is actually intelligent enough to understand the difference between a, a corporate enterprise network and say a home network. For example, we're going to look at devices on that network that have also been onboarded to Defender for Endpoint. So if there's just one device on the network that's been onboarded to Defender for Endpoint, it's probably a personal network. But let's keep going. What's DHCP scope look like? What's the default gateway look like? What are these other attributes of a corporate network versus a personal network? And the system's going to make that distinction. Now, you can override that. And in fact, that's some of your opportunity as a consultant or an architect is to work at the customer and build those requirements. And then if you need to override it and say only do these networks and not these, you can absolutely do that. And there's there's capability and flexibility of the product to be able to, to accomplish that. So that's basic mode. Basic mode is passive. We're just listening to traffic on the network. We're not invasive. We're not doing anything. We're not sending a signal out. We're just listening. And this will return some results. It'll tell you, you know, what device it is and, and some basic stuff, right? Now, standard is where we send out an active signal, right? Sonar, passive is listening. Active sonar is sending that ping and waiting for it to bounce off an object and come back. That's what we're doing here. So when we listen to traffic on the network and we find something, we're going to send out a signal and we're going to better understand what that device is. Essentially, we're effectively, we're, we're probing the device. And so we're going to go out and understand a little bit more about that device. Now, it's not invasive, right? Uh, you're probably looking at a, at most of maybe 50 kilobytes of, of network data that's going to go across the wire. Um, and we do this once every three weeks. So it's 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 very minimal, right? And in fact, I encourage you to lab this up and throw Wireshark on it and, and take a look at it and give one of us a call. And we'd be happy to go through it with you. But it's, it's actually pretty minimal. But it's going to do some probing of that discovered device. Here's what I mean by that. We're going to look at what, what ports and protocols are coming off the wire from that device, right? SSH traffic, as I mentioned, DHCP, uh, CDP traffic, there's HTTP traffic. We're going to look at a, a number of different things to understand what's coming off of it. From there, we're going to be able to understand what it is, what operating system is it, possibly what version of operating system, what kind of hardware is it. There's a lot of intelligence gathering we can get from that that's going to get uh, painted in that dashboard and Defender for Endpoint. And it's just going to enrich it. We can get the host name of it as well, which can be interesting and, and powerful, depending on what I want to do. And so there's a lot of other things we can insights we can get off of this. And then eventually Defender for Endpoint is going to surface back to you. Here's a device we discovered. Here's the details about it. Here's some recommendations we have, like onboarding it. Um, if we see SSH coming off that device, right, we might make a recommendation of disable SSH or go look at it. The point here is we give you visibility, and that's what's important. So basic mode and standard mode. How do you change it? If you go into Defender for Endpoint and you go to settings, you'll see a new option called uh, device discovery. Within that settings page, you can see something that looks like here. This allows you to switch it from basic to standard. Now this PowerPoint's a little old. The default method used to be basic. As of, um, I think it's, yeah, I think it's July, actually. I need to go back and look. But as of July, we switched it over to standard. So the basic mode out of the box is standard. Now, that might cause some issues, right? If you've got a SOC out there monitoring, this may, this may start to show up on their dashboard. So obviously, there's a little bit of, of legwork you have to do to make sure that you know, this isn't being seen as some kind of potential threat on the network. I'll come back to that here in a second. But this is how you switch between the modes. Now, again, the difference here, basic, we're doing that passive, we're listening to traffic. Remember Defender for IoT, and Paul and Richard just talked about it, that's listening for traffic on that OT network. Same thing here. We're using that sense ndr.exe process to do that. Whereas standard, we're actively probing those devices that we discovered using unicast and multicast, 
and we're using another process called Sense IR. In fact, if you ever looked at Task Manager and you looked at the running processes for Defender for Endpoint, and I think the process is actually still named, named Windows Defender ATP, but if you look at those, you'll actually see Sense NDR and Sense IR. Um, how often does this run? Well, obviously basic, it's listening, it's always running. Again, standard only happens one every once every three weeks. And there's a timer built in the service. You can't you can't modify it or anything like that. Um, but it's it's not happening all the time. It's just once every three weeks. And again, um, as of July, standard is is enabled by default. Quick time check here. Okay. Um, so as we start to 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 get these insights in, we are looking at again network identification, telemetry, and metadata. And that helps us understand the difference between a corporate network and a, and a private network, right? Again, we're looking at how many devices on that network have been onboarded to Defender for Endpoint, what's the default gateway look like, DHCP scope. Um, we're looking at some other attributes about that network to make that distinction. You could always override this though in settings. And in fact, when you go in here, and here's a screenshot of it, when you go into settings, after you tell it to do basic or standard mode, you could then say select which devices to use for discovery. And that way you could tell it, hey, only use these devices for discovery, maybe exclude these other ones. Um, and then I could also tell it what network to do discovery on. And again, lots of configuration opportunity there. And again, opportunity for you all to work with your client on. Um, and again, I can exclude you know, honeypots or other devices, you know, maybe, uh, maybe sensors that the, the SOC uses from, from that active probing. But at most, we're going to do active probing once every three weeks, and it's like less than 50 kilobytes of network traffic, extremely minimal. And this is all well documented, and I, I encourage all of you to lab this up as well and, and, and understand it. Uh, here's an example of those networks. So any network that we discover through, uh, through the discovery process here will show up here. I can then tell it to exclude it, or I could say, hey, this is a monitored network, so I have some control over that. Now, if you go into advanced settings of Defender for Endpoint, this is where you'll see device discovery in this feature we've been talking about. My, my ask for you all is if you choose to disable it, please help us understand why. Uh, Microsoft has made a, a huge investment in this capability. For me, it's, it's kind of game changing. There's a lot of interesting possibilities to come out of this. Um, a lot of steps have been taken to make sure that you know this is engineered properly in the right way and all that. So if if there's feedback, right, customer or you maybe just don't feel comfortable with it or whatever it may be, you know, you're absolutely free to turn it off. But please give us feedback, right? We want to know why so we can make this better. Reach reach out to myself, Richard, Paul, anybody on the team, or you're just your Microsoft contact. We want to make sure that you know we take that feedback back to engineering and and make this product you know work for you. So help us understand that. But that's where you go to disable it if you have to disable it. Okay, that's device discovery. Let me talk a little bit about network device discovery. So device discovery was, again, unmanaged devices, Windows, iPad, Mac, Android, iPhones, that kind of thing, servers. Network device discovery is going out there and not only discovering network devices, but then performing a little bit of probing against them and then get an inventory of what's running on them and then making recommendations back. Now this is done in an authenticated way using SNMP. So what does this mean? Well, you take an agent that you download from the portal, and I'll get into this in a second, you download it from the portal, you install it on a Windows 10 device or server 2016 or 2019. And that agent is what's gonna be performing this, this network scanning. And the agent is gonna do that through SNMP. Right, so I punch in my SNMP community string um, if, and, and whatever other criteria I need to authenticate, and then it's going to perform that scan using SNMP. That does mean those network devices have to have SNMP properly set up, right? So this is not going to go out and find a rogue wireless access point. It's possible it might if SNMP is set up. It's possible, but it probably won't. So this is more for, we wanna actively, continuously monitor our network devices, firewalls, switches, and routers. We wanna actively monitor them. We wanna actively make sure they're on the latest version of firmware. 
We want to actively make sure they're properly configured. That's a great managed service opportunity for you all. But it's just a great way to be successful with security. So this is for that type of a scenario. And so again, we have this agent that gets installed on Windows 10 or, or Server 26 2019. It's out there in the network. It's doing the discovery and it's pulling back the data. Now, I, I mentioned it's doing this in an authenticated way. So again, we're using SNMP. And again, there's, there's two different methods of doing this. We can do the passive where we listen or the active probing. Um, and same thing with the device discovery here. Yeah, we're able to, to use those same processes. Um, now, if I'm using SNMP, it's done every hour. And then if there's no changes, then we send it back to the, uh, back to the cloud service every eight hours. This is all covered in technical documentation. I just kind of made it a little easier for you to interpret. The setup here, what do you have to do? Well, again, I see this as a great assessment opportunity, right? What if I'm your customer? Um, why don't you come in with a trial license of Defender for Endpoint? Why don't you come in and offer to set up SNMP on a few of my network devices, making this up here, play along, and do an assessment. Figure out, are those network devices on the latest version of firmware? Are they properly configured? You know, is there any known vulnerabilities? That kind of thing. Great assessment opportunity. If you go into production with this, then you need to follow what's on the screen here. So I obviously need to make sure SNMP is set up on those target devices, but then I also need to tell Defender for Endpoint the IP address range, what subnet. Um, I need to punch in any SNMP authentication credentials to be able to do that. So there's a little bit of configuration on the Defender for Endpoint side. And again, this is all well documented. And so here you can see that the standard OIDs that we use for SNMP to be able to gather the name of the device and description, right? Um, now, when we discover those network devices, like in this case, uh, a Cisco device running iOS, we'll see what version of iOS it's running, and then we'll look look at the um, basically a MITRE, and we'll understand okay, what CV, what public CVEs are out there, public vulnerabilities that have been disclosed for that version of, in this case, iOS. And now you know. And I can look at this page here, and I can see information about it, and now I can make an informed decision on okay, do I want to do I want to upgrade? How do I upgrade? Maybe I call up my Microsoft partner and say, hey, help me do this. Again, this can be an assessment where you go out and run this for the customer. You come back with recommendations, but that's the idea here. I use the sensor. I do the discovery via SNMP. I see all the metadata about these devices, and then it allows me to then build a path forward to get them upgraded on their firmware and, uh, and do this on a continuous basis. Now, this is a capability, we have a few minutes left, so I'm gonna start wrapping up here, but this is a capability that we have built, Microsoft has built. And so obviously we're maintaining on the back end and there's some investment from us. So right now we support Cisco, Juniper, HPE, Palo Alto, and Pulse. Uh, so like F5 and Zscaler and some of those other guys, um, the engineering team is out there actively you know, working with, with those uh, hardware partners to get those supported. But as of now, this is what we currently support. Um, so keep that in your back pocket. And again, that's all documented on the documentation website, docs.microsoft.com. I would definitely stay up to date on that for when we add additional coverage. Um, but extremely powerful, right? Again, if, if I was a Microsoft partner, doing this in an assessment capability, giving those recommendations, remediating recommendations for the customer, and then having some kind of a managed service where I do this ongoing, in addition to all of the other devices on the network that Defender for Endpoint covers, there could be huge value there. Um, <clears throat> let me share with you some resources. Now, again, you'll get a copy of this, and, and I don't know if we're going to put any of these in the chat window for you or not, but um, we have a lot of great documentation out there. So definitely check that out on device discovery and, and network discovery capabilities. We've also got some great blogs we wrote on the Microsoft Tech Community website. Please check those out as well. You know, and of course, if you have any questions, you know, reach out to any of us on the team. You know, we, we definitely want to work with you and make sure you uh, you lab this up, you learn it, you understand it, and help you take it out to your clients. Now, with that being said, I'm going to take just a, a few moments here before 10:15 uh, my time, and I'm going to just show you the console and what this looks like. So this is my tenant uh, that's running Defender for Endpoint. Here you can see under device inventory, all of the endpoints that are either onboarded or that this thing discovered. So you can see over here, this column for onboarding status. Now what's interesting is some of these are not supported. Some of these will show also other identifiers like uh, not none of data available. Maybe that's where we need to switch from basic to standard to do some active probing. 
But here you can see some devices that are not onboarded, but can be onboarded. Like here's a Windows 7 device that found. Uh, here's a Mac that found that's not managed. So that kind of gives you an idea. Now, I don't have any enterprise network devices in my environment, so I don't have any data to show you, although I had some slides on that that you saw for examples. But I talked about that agent. So this is where I would click on scan for network devices. I download the scanner, installed on a Windows 10 or a server 26-2019 uh, device, and then I run an assessment job. So I can give it a name here. I tell it which device to use, so which scanner I installed it on, and then I give it a range of IP addresses and subnet. And then I configure my SNMP settings, right? And that's gonna create a job and go out there and, and start the scan for those network devices that we talked about. Over on the left side here, if we scroll down to settings and we go to device discovery under settings, and again, this is at security.microsoft.com, here's where I could start to configure this. You saw this in the PowerPoint. So again, by default, standard is enabled. So active probing is enabled by default. If you change it back to basic, we would love your feedback and, and understand why so we can improve the product. And then I could select which devices to use. So, you know, again, I might say if this was in production or even in an assessment scenario for a POC, only use this device on that network. So I could do that and I could do that through the tagging process and I can go in and build the tags just like I would throughout the rest of Defender for Endpoint product to be able to scope it to devices I want to use. Exclusions, um, I could do that by IP address or by host name or sorry, uh, by IP address uh, or subnet to be able to exclude those devices from being probed. Again, a honeypot, those type of things. Here's the networks that it discovered. So this is my home network. Um, I have it currently monitored, but I could choose to ignore it. If I have it set to automatically monitor, that's where we use the logic to understand is it a personal or private network versus a corporate network. And we talked about that. And then for the network discovery portion, I talked about those jobs that you create and configure the SNMP information. Those would show up here. So while there's not a lot to it, uh, from a, a portal perspective, there's a lot of things to think through on the back end here as you go to design and implement this. So the last thing I'll leave you with is on the website here, there's an excellent FAQ. And when you scroll through this FAQ, it answers most of the questions you may have. Again, let us know if there's any outstanding questions, but this will even tell you what protocols it's using. So here's a full list of protocols that's going out there and, and probing with. ARP, DHCP, FTP, SSH, that kind of thing. So please leverage this amazing information here to be able to understand how this works. Okay, so with that being said, I think we're right at time. Uh, so thank you, I, I appreciate the time. Um, so I'll turn the, turn the table back over to uh, the other presenters. And again, if you have any questions, let us know, we're happy to help.